The Zelda franchise is known for its grand sense of adventure, its immersive worlds, and captivating storytelling. That's great and all, but one of my favorite things about Zelda is how you can break into people's homes, smash everything, steal their belongings, and walk out without saying a word. So that's why today, we'll be seeing how fast you can break a pot in every Zelda game, starting with the original Legend of Zelda on the NES. Okay, so this game was actually created before pots were invented in 1990. So what we'll do instead is uh, break this old man. Same thing with Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. Sorry, Zelda, I didn't want to have to do this, but I have no choice. Okay, now we can finally start smashing with Link to the Past. Right after Uncle Mustachio leaves, we can destroy some of his world-famous prized pots. And it's totally fine because he won't be needing them much longer. On to Link's Awakening now, and it looks like this will be another quick one. Got some pots right here. Oh, uh, never mind. I guess I'm not strong enough, but that's okay. We'll set off on our journey to build enough muscle to break these pots. First, let's head to the beach to grab our sword. Uh, cannot leave the island unless I wake the wind fish? Yes, I will definitely do that. I guess we'll continue on by completing the first dungeon of the game. Then we'll save this chain chomp who appears to be lost in the wrong game franchise. Unfortunately, pots in this game are chain chomp proof as well. So instead, we'll make our way to the second dungeon where we are immediately taunted by even more pots. Eventually, though, we can obtain the blue power croissant, which finally gives us the strength to break them. On to Ocarina of Time, where after having a nice, long, very important conversation with our friend Saria here, we can pay our neighbor a visit and borrow some of their money. Oh, uh, did not think anyone was home. I'll just, uh... Next, we've got Majora's Mask, and after spending a few minutes making some new friends, we'll head over to West Clocktown to enter the trading post, where we can climb up these stumps to break a pot. By the way, I looked all around Clocktown, and this was the only pot I was able to find, but let me know if there's some that you know of that I missed. Now onto Oracle of Ages, where after some intro cutscenes, ooh, looks like these might be the same extra strong pots like the ones from Link's Awakening. But that's okay, let's travel back in time to pick up the legendary Ancient Shovel, which is unfortunately not able to break pots. So after saving a baby tree, we'll go back to the present and head to the first dungeon of the game. Now here what you want to do is fall down into the void and then make it to this room and go through this door and backtrack to get the key you totally didn't forget about to go through this door, which eventually takes us underground to get the power croissant, which gives us the strength to break this pot. Oracle of Seasons, as you would expect, has very similar pots. After some turbulent weather, we'll head down to this non-conspicuous cave to collect the ancient hidden treasure of lore. Now let's head to the first dungeon, slay a dragon, shout out to the first boss in the original Zelda, get a life, then start making our way towards the second dungeon. But first we need to play a little bit of hide and seek. I gotta say though, she's not very good at this. Now let's teleport to an alternate dimension where we can get a magical rod that turns everything into winter. With this new power, we're able to steal a shovel that again, unfortunately, isn't strong enough to break these pots. With the shovel though, we can finally reach the second dungeon where inside we'll obtain another power croissant with our health in peak condition. Now all that's left to do is go back one room and break a pot and also pass on to the afterlife now that we've saved the world. Okay, on to Four Swords, where we'll hop right into the training area and grab our totally real friend that we're playing with, carrying them up to this warp zone here. After teleporting, there's plenty of pots just waiting to be broken. Also, fun fact, you can do this in Four Swords. Next up, we've got the Wind Waker, and I don't know what's going on with this bridge down here, but I don't think I've ever managed to actually walk across it. Anyways, what we want to do here is track down this woman who's being surrounded by pots and come to her rescue. No need to thank me, ma'am. Just doing my job. 
Also, as a bonus, I'm sensing some more pots lurking up here in this attic. So let's go check it out. Yep, sure enough. Another village saved. On to the Minish Cap, where we'll make our way downstairs over to Grandpa's room, where there's a couple of pots. Perfect. Uh, yep, that's very nice, Zelda. But if you don't mind, I'll just make my way over to these pots. Grandpa, please, we have company. Okay, finally. This is for embarrassing me in front of Zelda. On to Four Swords Adventures, where we'll make our way through the first level, making sure to pick up this fire rod along the way. I hid it from him, but I think you can have it. And besides, you look like you can be trusted with it. After rescuing Tingle, making our way through some caves, and taking out a bunch of soldiers, we'll quickly move on to the end of the level, and I forgot you needed 2,000 gems to get past here. So we'll quickly make our way through the first level, making sure, of course, to pick up enough gems along the way so we can head into this cave and break some pots. Alright, next up is Twilight Princess. The game starts with prompting you to go pick up Epona, so let's grab our horse and head to town. Hmm, I wonder if there's any pots in these houses. Maybe we can sneak in. Okay, never mind. Let's just round up some donkeys for now, and maybe we can do some breaking and entering later. Uh-oh, that's not good. On to the next day now, where there's still no pots to be found. So instead, we'll naturally uh, befriend an owl, steal a cradle from a monkey, and give it to this woman. Look, I know you're pregnant and all, but could you walk a little faster? Then after getting robbed by a cat and stealing some money from the townsfolk, we'll buy a weapon to look cool and impress a group of children. Then after chasing them and the now cradleless monkey into a cave, we can- Oh my, what kind of pot debauchery has been going on in here? Here, let me uh, put you out of your misery. Onto the DS games now with Phantom Hourglass. And while at first glance it may appear this town has some kind of conspiracy going on, replacing all pots with barrels, fear not, because inside this old man's house, there's also plenty of pots to break. I'm gonna take this one with me though. Spear Tracks is a very simple one. There's a couple of pots right away in the house we started. Here, Grandpa, take some health. Next, we've got Skyward Sword, where in the Knights Academy, we'll head out of Link's room and meet Fledge, who looks like he's having some trouble carrying stuff. Here, let me show you how it's done. Onto a Link Between Worlds, where after we're rudely awoken by Link Jr., we have some easy access to pots right here in our own house. For Triforce Heroes in the starting area, we'll quickly make our way up here, and ooh, I see some pots over there. Hmm, how do I get down there though? Ah, uh, bah! Work smarter, not harder, kids. Alright, on to Breath of the Wild. Let's quickly grab our Wii U, skip putting on pants as always, and make our way towards the Temple of Time. Head for the point marked on the map in your Sheikah Slate. Yep, okay Zelda, I will get right on that. Let's just make it past the mighty pot guardian and throw this... Wait, what? Did that pot just spontaneously combust? What was that? Uh, anyways, that counts. Finally, we've got Tears of the Kingdom, where we begin our underground quest alongside Zelda to uncover the hidden ancient history of pots. Then after some trivial stuff happens related to a demon king or something, we can finally get back to the important stuff. Let's again save some time by not putting any pants on and set out into the world. After going for a little swim, we'll acquire a brand new Nintendo Switch, make our way across this bridge where we stumble upon an absolute treasure of ancient pots. Aw oh man, Zelda's gonna love these. Zelda, come take a look. Wait, where's Zelda? Ah, right. And for the final results, here's how long it takes to break a pot in every Zelda game from slowest to fastest. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like these kinds of videos, consider subscribing.